What's up YouTube and welcome to my lacrosse 2018 review, a game no one literally heard of until the end of February when it was first announced and coming out a few weeks later in March, later to be delayed before, literally the day before it's released with no release date in sight except for very soon and it turned out to be approximately a month later. So besides having the worst marketing ever, and I mean ever, I don't think I've ever seen a piece of entertainment, whether it be music, movies, or video games, marketed so poorly. I mean, SoundCloud rappers promote themselves better than this game. But besides it having horrendous marketing, how's the actual game? Well, let's find out. Let's talk graphics. I actually won't spend too much time here because you can actually see the graphics on your screen and see what the game looks like. There is a slight upgrade, uh, mostly in the lighting. Player models are roughly the same and stadium atmosphere seems uh, mostly unchanged. Uh, but the lighting has improved, creating a more natural color palette. Uh, not overly saturated with, you know, crushed blacks like in Casey Powell Lacrosse 2016. Although graphics haven't been improved a whole lot, uh, the real beauty of the game lies under the hood. Gameplay. Lacrosse 18 gameplay feels so much better than its predecessor. Players are easier to control, it feels more natural, it's much, much smoother. Uh, in Lacrosse 2016, the game the gameplay was alright, but everything felt very tight on the field and compressed and very fast. And while it wasn't horrible, I think it was just good enough to get by and to be playable. Plays never seem to develop on offense, and if you wanted to play you know, that Spurs basketball style where you pass the ball around to every single player before you shoot, uh, I mean, you could pretty much forget about it. It wasn't going to happen. Like, the field was just so compressed in that game, it was impossible to happen. Unless, I mean, I don't know, maybe I'm just not very good, but uh, which is also true. Uh, but KC Powell across 18 feels great. Uh, it's organic is probably the best word I can think of. Uh, while playing the game, everything unfolds naturally, and I don't feel like I'm fighting this problematic physics system uh, with the player controlling the ball. Passing around the crease is easier. Playing behind the crease is easier. Uh, the game was slowed down a little bit. The field of play feels a little bit more open, allowing the freedom of players to move around and make cuts which is something I didn't really see in 2016. And like, yeah, I saw players make cuts, but I don't know if it was just me and maybe it's not something that you'll totally understand unless you play both games. Um, but jumping on 2018, I just felt like I could move the ball around so much easier in lacrosse 18 than in lacrosse 16. I went back and I actually played Casey Powell lacrosse 2016 earlier today. Uh, on the 18th, so just a day later, and just to make sure I wasn't suffering from like, ooh, shiny new game syndrome, uh, and I'm not. I'm just having so much more fun playing 18 than I ever did with 16. And I had fun with 16, um, but I think the new controls also have a lot to do with that. The face-offs actually make sense in this game. If you say you know how to do face-offs in lacrosse 2016, um, you're a liar because it made no sense. Uh, lacrosse 18, you just move both joysticks in the direction you want the ball to go. It's that simple. And your teammates actually run in and will pick the ball up on a ground ball. Uh, also, shooting has been greatly improved. You have more stick control and it's been simplified. If you want to do a behind the back shot, you dangle your stick behind you and rotate that right thumb stick around the other direction. Gone are those days of holding the left bumper while rotating the right thumb stick in, a, in like a half circle. Uh, you just pull back the right thumb stick and then rotate. Uh, and you can see I had a nice uh, behind the back goal here, something I never would have pulled off <laughs> in lacrosse 2016. I also love how you can just flick the right analog stick side to side, almost like an NHL games, you know, when you can uh, move the hockey stick back and forth. You can kind of do that with this as well. And then you can even just pull back and let the stick dangle behind you and then, you know, either pass from there or shoot. And, uh, I think my favorite thing about the controls is they finally got rid of that god awful sprint mechanic where you have to click and hold on the left joystick. I mean, I felt like I was constantly just destroying the analog stick on my controller because you got to click it, but you don't just click and let go like most games, you know, like in Call of Duty or in Fortnite. You click that left thumb stick and then you're sprinting. You have to click and hold it down. And I felt like I was just putting way too much pressure on the analog stick. Sprinting was annoying. L trigger is now sprint, or uh, I guess that's going to be L2 for the uh, PlayStation users. 
and it just it feels better the only controller change that confused me was uh the body check um and all sports games have adapted to the right thumbstick uh for body checks ever since madden introduced the hit stick uh, nhl does it madden uh, all pro football backbreaker i mean even casey powell across 2016 used that right thumbstick to perform a body check you know hit stick so why all of a sudden change it to the B button or circle if you're on PS4? I have no clue. Uh, so that was taking some getting used to. You've probably seen it in the gameplay video I posted earlier where I'm just standing in front of the defender and it's because I'm trying to figure out how to hit stick somebody uh, this whole time and it's actually the B button. Uh, the other thing that doesn't really make sense is uh, the stick check buttons and the face buttons I don't really think makes sense in my opinion. Uh, if you want to overhand slash someone, uh, what do you think you would press? You know, when you swing your stick down at someone, I would think Y, since you know Y or triangle is at the top of your face buttons. Um, it would make sense that that would be the one where you're slashing you know, downwards from the top. But no, you press A. Now, what about a poke check? A poke check is simple. You're just poking your stick out. It's a simple attack, and usually. In sports games or like adventure and action games, your simple attacks in gaming are usually designated to the A or X button, um, which is X and square if you're on PlayStation. But no, the poke check is Y. Um, now, I know that sounds nitpicky, but when every game in the sports and adventure genre has A is like their basic move, you know, whether you're opening a door, doing some uh, something like that, I don't know why y or triangle is designated as the poke check uh, does it just to me it doesn't make sense but all in all gameplay is fantastic it's definitely the big selling point for the game it is that much better than the 2016 version career slash franchise mode i have to say i'm highly disappointed in this mode right here is they pulled an ea and didn't change anything at all and I mean nothing. The same crappy UI is here with only the basic stats to look at for your player. If you're a coach, you control the lineup, trading, and signing players. The only difference in this mode is when you're picking a sponsor at the beginning of the season, they use skill points now instead of money because uh, that makes sense. But I'm highly disappointed, especially since they have the stadium editor in this game now. I was hoping to see this awesome franchise mode that you know replicated something of MVP Baseball 2005 where you could create a stadium from the ground up adding popcorn stands and scoreboards and more seats. Uh, if you've never played MVP Baseball 2005, you need to play it. I mean, I know it's old. It's a PS2 original OG Xbox game, but the career mode in that, hands down, I think still to this day, one of my favorite franchise modes in all the sports games I've ever played. I mean, there's, I mean, you're, you have to manage your money throughout all the minor league teams that you own for the MLB franchise, and you need to use it to sign more talent, uh, to upgrade your state. I mean, you start off with this like tiny little stadium that holds 20,000 people and you've got like a little manual <laughs> scoreboard that has no, uh, images, but as you progress, you know, you can add more stands, you can add, uh, coffee, you can add soda, pretzels, you can have fireworks shoot off. Um, it's really, really cool. I suggest you look it up um, if you're into that type of stuff. It's really fun. Um, but other than that, I'm just really disappointed that career mode was pretty much untouched in Casey Powell across 2018. All right, let's talk about the good things. And the good things about this game is creation. And holy cow, it's phenomenal. Let's start with the player creator. Uh, it's as good as it gets. There aren't many other games out there that give you this type of customization. I mean, it's insane how much you can customize. And in fact, it's almost overwhelming all the different changes you can make. It's like too much to wrap your head around. Uh, but if you have time, you can create an exact, an exact replica of yourself or anyone you want. Uh, the player creator is top notch, USDA, grade A, Kobe beef. I mean, it's, uh, it's, I mean, not, not even just in sports games, just in all games in general, man. It's, that's a phenomenal, and, uh, war paint's back, so, uh, I like being able to put some war paint on my guy, and speaking of top-notch and great, the stadium creator, 
back to MVP Baseball 2005, it's the best I've seen since that game. It's basically Sim City lacrosse stadium style. And I'm talking placing stands wherever you want, deciding the seat color, placing little donut and coffee shops in the arena if you want a roof or no roof, what type of style of roof you want. Clubhouse, clubhouse style, clubhouse paint color, banners, different scoreboard options. I mean, you can literally create the park of your gene. Oh, yeah. You can literally create the park of your dreams or recreate its real life counterparts from, you know, real life teams. It's truly amazing. Uh, my only gripe is I can't move objects vertically in space. Uh, so my dream of having my nine tiered stadium is gone because I can't place pieces on top of each other. <sighs> But on to the logo editor. I haven't had too much time with it because I'm terrible at it. Uh, I wasn't good at Backbreakers logo editor. But for my brief time with it, uh, it's just as complex. And you'll, or yeah, I guess complex is the right word. I mean, I meant to say that uh, it has just, it has all the same features that Backbreakers editor did. You'll be able to create anything. Uh, Backbreakers was much more user friendly to use, I think. Uh, the creation navigation controls are a little wonky in this game. The user interface could definitely use a makeover. Uh, but the system itself is great, and it allows for complete freedom to create whatever you want. If you're skilled enough to create it, you can create it. And that's a huge, huge positive because the community can recreate all the NCAA teams across all platforms. And you can access these teams from the game itself. You don't have to have any outside program like Modio. Um, or like go online and download them with a USB stick. It's all ac accessible from the game. Download them and create your own custom league. And you can create a custom league with the actual Major League Lacrosse teams that the community has made, start up a career mode, and then use that custom league instead of the game's default, which will allow you to have an authentic lacrosse game that you want. The negatives. Yes, the game has negatives. It's nothing too big, but still some things that are just kind of annoying. Uh, the cross editor, uh, which is where you know you can customize your own lacrosse stick, it's uh, somehow been downgraded from lacrosse 2016. So here's lacrosse 2016. This is Casey Pal lacrosse 2016. I'm making my own stick. I can choose different patterns on the shaft. I can change the string pattern on the mesh. Pretty cool. Now here's lacrosse 18. I guess I'm just stuck with the, uh, you know, either two-tone Malone or a solid color. <laughs> uh, I mean, there is no patterns to pick from. The mesh has zero string pattern customization, which kind of sucks. I'm not sure how you add all this stuff, and then I can't even make a custom stick or have an American flag stick like in Lacrosse 2016. Uh, another negative feature, uh, there isn't a snap feature uh in the stadium creator so you'll have to painstakingly manually line up your objects next to each other so that it all looks okay um and also i can't create my nine level super dome lacrosse arena with you know that holds 180,000 fans uh i mean that's obviously a little bit more of a joke but i mean as a stadium creator you're supposed to let your you know your mind is supposed to run wild so the fact i can't take you know this three deck stadium and then take another one and stack it on top of it to make six levels uh you know, it is what it is. It's not the end of the world, but it, it kind of sucks to have like your creativity just taken down a little bit. But outside of that, I have no real complaints other than career mode being untouched, which I've already spoken about before in the career mode section. So I'm not going to recover what I've already talked about. Uh, I think they dropped the ball big time with that one. It's almost standard now that you need to have a good career mode. Uh, with off the field work to do such as finances upgrading stadiums team buses more uh, just management features that people like and that's why people play franchise mode uh, i think it's a huge fail on their part to not have improved franchise mode at all uh, and everyone's question is going to be is it better than 2016 and is it worth buying yes it is better than lacrosse 2016 the freedom of creation will allow the major league lacrosse to be replicated in this game or college lacrosse to be replicated in this game and used in your career mode as a coach or a player i mean i've already found four major league lacrosse teams and this is just day two of its release uh, imagine if you give the community a week or a month and just you know you see what you find out there so what i'm saying is uh don't let the li don't let the lack of a license scare you away from this game i do believe gameplay on its own 
is enough for the $50 price tag. Uh, because, I mean, there, there wasn't a game last year. It's not an annual release. Uh, and if you like Lacrosse 2016, you're going to love Lacrosse 2018, especially with the freedom of customization. That's just like a little perk added to the side. Uh, it's, it's wonderful. So what do I rate this game? I give it a score of the 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars. Although it's much improved from its previous years, it still wasn't enough to go out with a bang. It still fell short, still choked when it really mattered. And I'm talking about career mode there, and I'm also talking about the Patriots game. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I, that's, that, that's my score. 2017 Jacksonville Jaguars. Much improved, but not quite enough. I uh, hope that review was uh, helpful for you guys. Uh, more lacrosse videos coming, more backbreaker videos coming. But that's it. Peace.